what did you f- focus and specialize on? In my, my PhD? Yeah. Um, that's an interesting one. It has nothing to do with what I do right uh, now. Uh-huh. But I always say a PhD is about the skills that you get and then you can apply them. On or whatever things. else. So that's it's not true. so much the topic of yeah. your research. Yeah. My, the topic is sometimes is interesting, but yeah. sometimes um, there's a PhD that gives you skills that are cross-cutting. Yeah. So this was a PhD on epidemiology. Mm-hmm. So I'm, a, I'm an ep- epidemiologist. Mm. And uh, the big framing was um, communicable and non-communicable diseases right. and the interrelationships. Yeah. So that was the big framing. And then under that, there were topics on, let's say, how infectious diseases lead to stomach cancer. Mm-hmm. So you've had the story of H. pyroli. Mm. Um, it's very common, mm. commonly done here. There's mm. a, there can't be a connection with mm. let's say, stomach cancer. There, mm. were, there were like PhD topics looking at hepatitis B and liver mm. cancer. Mm. So there were those things which were very uh, specific, mm. looking at the connections between infectious diseases mm. and um, non-communicable diseases mm. and then now there were other topics looking at infectious diseases on their own and mm. communicable diseases on mm. their own mm. so my topic mm-hmm. was an interesting one mm-hmm. and it is linked to german society and their migration politics and policy oh so for many years oh my um, okay <laughs> for many years uh-huh. it was very difficult to become a german citizen mm-hmm unless you are German mm. and you become German because you're a German citizen. Your mm. parents are German citizens. Yeah. So if you are non-German, like mm-hmm. people who migrated to Germany like in the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. like maybe even in the early 2000s, mm-hmm. they would not be German citizens. Mm. It was very difficult mm-hmm. because German was like an ethnicity. Mm-hmm. So you could only become German because you're ethnic mm-hmm. German. Mm. So, so now because of what was happening in different parts of Europe, mm. <clears throat> Um, there was a, a projected crisis mm. of the social security system, mm. the social um, safety nets, mm. whereby there was a, a reduction in fertility, so not many people are giving birth. Mm. Therefore, over time, you have people who are much, much older and very few people who are young. Mm. And so the, the social security system, there are too many people taking out mm. and few people putting in. Mm-hmm. And there were all these projections showing that maybe by 2050, mm. this system would collapse because there would be too many old people and yeah. too few yeah. young people who are putting yeah. money into the system. Yeah. And therefore, a lot of European countries needed migration reform yeah. so that they can get in people who are younger, mm. also who are going to have more babies, mm. and so that the mm. whole society does not collapse mm. uh, you know, in those years. Mm. So uh, they, they tried what they call a guest worker program. Ghost, which, guest, guest worker, guest worker, guest worker program, program. Mm. which involved mostly Turkey. So mm. they had there are a lot of Turkish bringing people, Turkey people, yeah, to Germany. who came to Germany mm. and they studied from there. They mm. stayed there. They worked. Mm. A lot of them became businessmen. Mm. So there was like a, a Turkish guest worker program. It was still guest worker. Those people never became German mm-hmm. for many years. Mm. Just come and work only. Just come and stay and keep on giving your visa, mm. with your family. You mm. can have your children born there, but those children who are born were still Turk. They were mm. not. Mm. They were not German. Mm. So then. In the 90s, they decided mm-hmm. to do another experiment. Mm-hmm. And this time, they decided to repatriate mm. people who were considered ethnic Germans mm-hmm. who had migrated mm-hmm. to countries in the former Soviet Union mm-hmm. in the 18th century. Mm. 18, this was like 1745 or something. Mm. 200 years later, mm. more than 200, yeah. they wanted to repatriate Denver. these individuals. Mm. So these people had migrated to Ukraine and all this Russia and all these countries, Kazakhstan, mm. and they had maintained an, a German identity. Mm. So they were considered German mm. because, as I've said, German, mm. like historically, was it, like an ethnicity. It, yeah. So these people went, and generations later, mm. they were still looked at as German mm-hmm. by all these Russians and mm. Croatians and all these mm-hmm. Ukrainians. Mm. And they are, during the world wars, of course, they were, you know, persecuted because they were mm. considered on the other side. Mm-hmm. And so, because they were they were having this kind of um, tension, the German government decided that these were Germans. Mm. They were going to re- to bring them back, mm-hmm. and they repatriated, I think, about three million people mm. over a ten-year period. Mm. <clears throat> 
Now, when they came to Germany, mm. they were all not actually German because the German they spoke was not German. Oh. Their kids didn't speak German. Mm. They had academic qualifications which were not mm. um, equivalent and accepted. So mm. people who were doctors, like in Ukraine, they came and they couldn't practice as doctors. Mm. People who were teachers couldn't teach. Mm. So and then when they came, they congregated like in settlements, mm. and they couldn't. They did not assimilate. They did not connect with the rest of the population. Mm. So. Uh, by the time I was doing my PhD, it was already being recognized as a failed experiment. <laughs> but then our PhD now was trying to see uh, among all the other things which have failed, mm. how are they faring mm. in terms of health? Mm. Mm. So how I do see. they compare with yeah. what they call the autochthonous population, like the Germans who were born yeah. and grew up in Germany? In, yeah. That was my PhD. Oh, so interesting. To, <laughs> when I talk about people, like, huh, what? What? Ethnic oh, Germans? Why like, would you even They call that? them our seedlers, like. Uh, yeah. Our so like was that like chosen, or was it among <laughs> like the the list that was already chosen and spon yeah. um, uh, sponsored? Yes. Okay. So it was part of the group of PhD Eight. topics yeah. in that big yeah, PhD yeah, yeah. program. That's so I had to look at the list of topics which were there and yeah. say, I want this one, and then luckily. They it were still looking available. for a PhD students. We were two, yeah. and they're looking for a second one. So, wow! Uh, wow. If I chose, and your husband was doing a different topic, completely different. Yeah, he's a malaria scientist, so hey. <laughs> he was doing something completely oh, different. Wow! Yeah. So you're but, saying that now took slightly more than three years to to do? Yeah, yeah. Wow! It was. Um, there were many many things to learn yeah. and appreciate because we did I this can imagine. Um, using administrative data. Mm -hmm. So just imagine these three million people came mm. and all of them were recorded mm. and the, the government knew where they, they landed mm -hmm. and then they knew after like three months which town they were sent to because they would send them to different towns mm. um, um, across the across the country. Mm. And so the administrative system in Germany, when you arrive in a new town, you mm. have to register. Mm. When you leave that town, before you leave, you have to register. Mm. And then when you go to a new town, you register again. And Whoa. town means like um, maybe ward. Ward level. Like mm. That would be like mm -hmm. the, the unit, of, the administrative unit. Mm. So they had a list of 3 million people. Mm. They knew which people had been sent to which state. Mm. And then at the state level, which town they had been sent to. Mm -hmm. So what we did was to pick one state, mm. pick some towns, mm. and then write letters with people's names and dates of birth and ask their resident status. Mm. And that was the beginning. So when you'd send a list to one town, they would say, this person came and then they left on this day and they went to this town. Then you send a letter to the next town and say, we have a list of people, 20 who came to your town and these are their names, this is their date of birth, and this is their time when they came. So what is their current residential status? So what kind of team did you need to do this? You it was are... just me and the person I was doing the PhD with. So we learned how to set up um, MS access databases My goodness. <laughs> and then create a relational database that you could track and update from and, whatever and um, on MS. Yeah, yeah, we just used, 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 used MS access to access. do the, oh, the wow. tracking wow. and we were able to do this and track people. And then when they'll tell you somebody died because they, if you die, you register again. Yeah. So as I said, we only used administrative data. We didn't interview any single person. Yeah. Yeah. So once the person died, mm. then we would compile a list of people who have died in a certain city mm. and then send it to them and say, can you link with your cause of death records to give us the cause of death of these individuals? Mm. Mm. And in many instances, they would be able to find them. In some instances, they would and be like updates. duplicate names and mm. what, and they wouldn't give us the information. Mm. Mm. But we we're able to get cause of death mm. for about 70 something thousand people using that system okay it it, it i mean it sounds <laughs> for for that um <coughs> obviously this is not the time this is not the first time you're doing that level of research because then i mean at master's level you had been exposed to yeah a but bit it was research, different scale but different it was scale. different scale yeah. but this is the first time at this scale you're yeah. doing this level of research and uh, to produce also this level of yeah. insights and knowledge uh what's that doing to you <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's just showing me like my goodness the the power of data systems yeah because seriously we sat down and got lists and just manipulated them and sent them out mm. and that the fact that systems work mm. because you would send a random email mm. to the head of the unit i don't know of records or something and then in follow a different up. Different administrative yeah, state. Yeah. yeah, because we we like as I said, you would get the original data set, mm -hmm. which says 
these are the towns to which this individual mm. these individuals were sent to yeah so now you aggregate people based on the towns they were initially sent to mm -hmm. then you send that list mm. the town mm. and say what is the residential status of these people mm. so they'll come back to you resident mm. resident 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 mm. left mm. to mm. where mm. died on mm. this day cause of death no 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 cause oh, of death would, that's it, it was a different data mm. set mm. You know, mm. then now the people that said they, they told you they were left. Mm. Now you'd write letters to mm. the towns to mm. which they 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 went, and then send another list and say mm. we were told this person came to this town on this mm. around this time. So mm. what is their current status? Mm. Then they'd write back to you after many emails and follow ups and mm. phone calls. Mm. They'd write back to you and say this is the current status. Mm. So you keep on updating your mm. database, mm. Mm. and then and it's uh, becoming exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was exciting. Every time you mm. get a response, you're like. Yeah. You run a query yeah. in MS Access and it updates everything. Then you can start seeing your trends. Yeah. Um, you know, who died, who's resident, what. Yeah. Um, those are very, very eye opening. But yeah. the power of data systems. Yeah. 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 And it's um, <laughs> so by the time you're done with your well, you're coming to complete your doctorate, mm -hmm. um, what what is the result? Mm -hmm. that you are seeing what what has it produced what 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 has this data that you've been collecting started to show you mm -hmm. so there were very interesting results mm -hmm. some of them completely unexpected mm -hmm. because um when you study migration theory there are mm -hmm. some expectations about migrants mm -hmm. migrants are not random mm. people they are selected people right it's only certain people who migrate yeah. not everybody migrates mm -hmm. so there there's already something called selection bias amongst yeah. migrants mm -hmm. and um, it's people who are i don't know adventurous mm. or maybe highly educated mm. or so there's something unique about migrants mm -hmm. and therefore when they migrate mm. many times mm. they are better off in terms of health mm. than the people they left behind mm -hmm. and in some instances the people they found mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th there's a, they, are, they are like hypotheses about what you expect mm -hmm. when you see migrants. So mm -hmm. we had expectations that mm -hmm. these people, number one, they came from Russia mm -hmm. or Ukraine and all these Kazakhstan and all these other countries. Mm -hmm. But then there were a disadvantaged population there. Mm -hmm. So even though they were selected, mm -hmm. we thought maybe they would be similar mm -hmm. to the people they left, they left behind. Mm -hmm. But when they came to Germany, mm -hmm. even though they were selected in terms of uh, maybe more highly educated and all that, mm. they could still be worse off mm. than the German population because the German population has grown up in a different economic environment and all that. So mm. we had some hypotheses. Mm -hmm. And then we, if you if you look at the different causes of death, mm. then you can also start saying which causes of death are likely to be more common mm. amongst this group compared mm. um, to the Germans. Mm. And then we got huge surprises mm -hmm. because we thought that... Um, alcohol-related causes of death that they would be worse off. But then we found it was only, I think, cancer. But like cardiovascular disease, they were doing better than the Germans. Germans, they were oh. doing better. Okay, okay, okay. Than the Germans. That was, huge. that was a huge surprise. Mm, mm. We thought that they, are, they would be much, much, much worse, worse off in many respects than mm, the Germans. Mm. And then we found things like, um, there, were, there was already like some social um, narratives around violence, around mm. suicide, around mm. uh, depression, around mm. um, homicide. Mm. Then we found, I think it was only suicide mm. when they were doing worse. But mm. homicide and all these other violence, mm. death, mm. they were doing better mm. than the Germans. Mm. So it was almost like, as I said, completely unexpected findings. Mm. Not um, in, in some instances, they were agreeing with what is known about mm. migrants, mm. but in others, mm. they just threw the book mm. out. Mm. But then for the government, mm. um, in a way, it was also to understand, okay, so what? What mm. do we do? Mm. Because mm. maybe for cancers, they were doing worse, so yeah. we need to do more in yeah. terms of screening yeah. and uh, you know, yeah. kind of um, yeah. health services. There were lots of um, things like suicide was yeah. quite high. Mm. And so violence was not as high as they thought it was. Mm. So I think in a way, it, was, it validated some of the choices mm. the government made, mm. the German government made, but mm. in other instances, they realized they needed to do more. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, <laughs> and this now, you are able to graduate with this, uh, present this results, yeah. uh, use it, graduate. <laughs>